I'm John White. With me today is Voice Pierce. Voice is a master gardener here in Doniana County. And Voice looks like you brought a lot of pecan samples. Well, pecans are on a lot of people's minds right now, and I just wanted to bring in some problems so we can assure people that things are still okay. okay. The first one is webworms. Not as bad this year as it was last year, but... No. At least not, not in the immediate area, but uh, we have seen uh, webworms coming out on some of the cottonwoods, but you can see there are some worms in here that are moving around mm -hmm. that have been feeding on the foliage. Uh, you know, if you're able to, one of the controls is just to cut the, the branch off and take the web out of the tree that way. And there are uh, biological controls like dipel mm -hmm. that can be used that is a bacterial will make the, the uh, caterpillar sick, it'll quit feeding and uh, eventually dies off. So it's kind of a slow death, but it will control the problem. The tricky thing on webworm is that you do need to break the web. So either a strong blast of water or take a, uh, you know, a rake or a shovel or something and kind of break the web up so that you can get the insecticide into it. And that way the worms will feed on it and it'll help take care of the problem, so. But won't all the worms come raining down on your head? No, not if you get them killed out. They'll dry up and, and just stay within the old web. Well, good. And then the web will eventually blow down and, and come out of the tree, so. Uh, but ornamentals, it's quite an unsightly problem. What else do we have? Well, I've got aphids, and you can tell that it's, there's aphids on here because you've got a shiny leaf. Okay. What we have here is a couple different type of aphids working, and we've talked a little bit about them before, but people, um, you know, maybe either didn't see the show or they're um, still not sure what they've got. But if you're starting to see a lot of, of uh, discoloration, mottling on the leaves where they're yellow and dead spots, that is usually a black pecan aphid. Now, the light green ones are called a uh, yellow pecan aphid or black margin aphid and uh, they're the ones that cause the stickiness, the, the honeydew on it. And we don't like to see a lot of aphids on it, especially the black pecan aphid, because after it's um, sucked some of the juice out, it puts in a toxin, kills a spot in the leaf. Is that and what then, the brown spots are? Right, and then a lot of times the leaf uh, falls off the tree prematurely or early. And we like to keep the leaves on the tree in order to finish the, the nut crop off for this year, as well as produce good wood for growth next year. What's this right here? That right there is a case probably from a, uh, um, a ladybug that might have been on a uh, pupil case. And so there's some beneficials that are working on the tree also. Another reason not to spray them with insecticide. Right, so you may have some, some good control there. What I've got here is, um, what got is a little, it? Got a little case bear going yes. there. Yes. Okay, pecan nut case bear uh, in the southern part of the state is a becoming a major problem. It uh, has hit several of the orchards from the Texas line all the way, all the way in, and uh, all across the southern pecan part of New Mexico. The best thing to do to find actually your your spray date is to contact your local county extension office and and find out what the spray date is for your particular area. Mm -hmm. If you have a large orchard, you might want to invest in a pheromone uh, material that you can put in the orchard. It'll help to attract the male moths to the pheromone trap and you can kind of get an idea when the moths are moving around. You go out to the orchard and actually check the, the uh, young pecan to see if there's any eggs that have been laid on it. And the eggs will be very, very tiny so you want to match up the moth flight with the egg lay, and then you will time your spraying accordingly on that. If you've got a commercial group of trees, that's one thing, but if you just got one or two in your garden, you wouldn't go out and spray that way for your garden tree, would you? If you're really trying to produce the, the pecans on your, on your yard tree, if you're really after maybe a, a little bit of an additional income from uh, pecan sales, then it's important to keep that uh, you know, the cluster of nuts on the tree, then yes, you would go through that effort because otherwise the case bear can reduce some of the load off the tree, which, you know, if you're selling it, that's income out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So you do want to uh, try and control it. But using the pheromone is the best way to, 
to actually time it so that you do a good job on it. How many how many bushels of nuts can you get off of a home tree? Home tree, you can get anywhere from probably 50 pounds on up to about 150 oh, so pounds. Oh, you can do pretty good then. Right. Oh, no wonder so, people go through that effort. Okay. Diseased pecans, not very okay. good looking. A pecan normally will produce somewhere about 10% pops. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by pops is a pecan, when you break it open, it's it's hollow inside or the the uh, uh, kernel has shriveled greatly. And uh, this can be pollination problems, but about 10% is expected. So if you have a you know, 200 pound crop on the tree, you're gonna have 10% of it come down as pops. And it's not a disease, it's, it's not, not a It's not a disease, it's, it's a, just a way of the plant to shed off, you know, some of the pecans that it can no longer manage. It, it has too big a crop on it, so it'll kick some off. So what you're saying is you're not gonna get 100% yield That's and right. not to worry about it. That's right, and some of them could be case bear problems, there could be other things with them. You want to look at your whole management regime to make sure that you're watering properly, that you're fertilizing, you know, you're taking care of insect problems, because all those can add up to problems later in the year. What's the meatiest type of pecan that we can grow here in southern New Mexico? Well, the meatiest, as far as the highest kernel percent uh, here in southern New Mexico, is probably the Wichita. Wichita? But we have a lot of different varieties that grow here. Uh, Western Sly is our most common variety, and that's the one that we see uh, mostly sold in the area, but uh, this has been a good pecan year, and uh, uh, hopefully this is a tree that just has a large crop on it. Well, so. Thank you, that's really interesting. Valois, thank you very much for bringing the samples today.